Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to talk about creativity and how to actually action creativity and who's best to talk about it than a person who's, had, who's trained in fine arts, had her own gallery and taught people how to be creative. Welcome, Georgia. Hi. Um, so, yes, yeah, so as, was, as I was saying, um, I had a difficult night last night. Um, I had a, a, a wound in my eye that my son, uh, my lovely four-year-old son, energetic four-year-old son inflicted upon me. And I ended up in A&E and had a, a, t a terrible evening and a pretty terrible morning. So I was thinking today, how could I action um, my exercise that I gave to people? And I thought the best way of actioning it or the most kind of relevant, meaningful way would be right now, which is, you know, uh, I am uh, creating this talk with you and to own the fact that I had a pretty nasty day. And so I'm going to be gentle with myself and accept the fact that I might be a bit fuzzy and not particularly articulate. And also do the, um, I made a few notes just before coming here and do the kind of sacrilegious thing of before I used to speak, I'd never allow myself to read, to look at a note. <laughs> I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's look at some notes. So um, that is my action. My, my uh, uh, creative action right here, right now, is doing this here with you and making this talk. Um, and now when Catherine approached me, it's funny to be kind of referred to as a, a, a creative uh, specialist, I guess. Because, you know, since I've been given that title, I'm like, am I, am I really, do I really deserve that title of kind of creative specialist? And I guess what I'm going to do today is talk through with you my thought process of, of if I really am. And, but actually different things that I've used within the realm of creativity to kind of affect my life and maybe you know you'll find that helpful at the end maybe you'll be like you know maybe maybe you do deserve the title of creative specialist or not but you know I'm going to highlight what uh, how creativity has actively affected my life um, but before I kind of start doing that um, I think it's important to define first you know what creativity is um, and I think when I was younger when I when I started going to art school um, I thought creativity was a state of action, you know, where you, you make works, you are an artist. Um, <laughs> it, it was a very kind of active thing in my mind. And uh, as the years have gone by, I have come to the conclusion that, that creativity is, is really a state of being. Um, it's, it's a way of thinking. And back to what Petra was saying earlier, Petra was saying, you know, I am not creative. Uh, and, and I'd like to argue actually the contrary that, uh, that everybody by, by nature is creative. Even the laziest person in the entire world, if somebody wasn't to move at all, you're still creative because creative is to create. And, you know, by sitting down, breathing we are creating breath by even sitting us here we are hearing our heartbeat by on a very profound existential level without even wanting to we are moving forward we are creating all of us here have kind of made human beings you know it, even if we didn't want to be creative it is impossible for us not to be so I think that is very much part of our kind of essence of existence, really, and, and, and what we should embrace. Now, all of the talks that we've listened to, I was thinking about this, really are about these biological processes, which we have naturally, you know, we've talked to, you know, with, with Carol about, you know, Qigong and, and moving energy, and, and with Zara, it's very much about breath. And these are things that we do whether we want to or not. We have energy, we breathe, and, and creativity or to make things is the same thing. But in relation to, to well-being, um, it's very much about how do you kind of harness this energy and, and make it work for you. Uh, you know, uh, to a certain extent, I wouldn't say control it, but work with it to help you move your life forward um uh 
yeah, so to a certain extent to, 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 to work with your natural impulses to help you uh, understand the world a little bit better. Um, and I was thinking about in relation to, you know, why it is that within the creative realm anyway, uh, why we feel ne the need to do this. Why do we feel the need to kind of reach inside ourselves really and, and make something? Since the beginning of time, we've always felt the need to do this. You know, cavemen, uh, they're doing kind of paintings on walls. I've always felt the, the need to manifest and create something. And I, th I thought today uh, about Theo's reaction. Uh, he, he, we had a show and tell at school and Theo hates these, these show and tells. Um, and today he desperately wanted to tell somebody about this experience of me going to hospital. It was the first thing he put up his hand, he stood in front of a show and tell and he told the whole class that he had this experience where his mother went to hospital. And for me, it was a real kind of light bulb moment because I was like, that's really in an essence, why for me anyway, I feel the need to create, which is to make sense of our lives, you know, to, to make sense of really what's happened to me, to try and process it. And it seems to be kind of an impulsive, instinctual thing that we do from an incredibly young age. Um, we do from, from our, you know, our, our first ability to do it, as, as my sh son is, was showing me. Um, now, during this act of creativity, um, I have found that even though it's narrative based and you're, you're making sense of things, it, always, it also kind of tends to ground you in the moment. So during this creative act, what I feel is important about it is you're taking, you're connecting with how you feel inside, which is quite grounding, but at the same time, you're finding a way to manifest it. And that might be in something small as running a bath for yourself if you're feeling kind of upset, or even attempting to try and make a work of art or cooking something. And that's what this whole kind of talk was about. That's what this whole exercise was about. Um, now, secondarily, what, what, what for me are the aspects of what creativity is? How, what does it feel like? You know, and, and I think the reason why people find accepting creativity into their lives challenging is because it is like a natural process. It is, it is wild. It is playful. It is unruly and it is constantly subject to change. And that's what exists within us. And if we embrace creativity in our lives, that really is what happens. And it opens you up to incredibly vulnerable spaces. You know, it could be something as simple as if you're in a relationship and you're seeing that it's not going right, kind of questioning yourself in a way, in a creative way that really makes you kind of push those boundaries. You, you don't kind of stop at the pre-existing norms like natural processes, you're constantly pushing outwards. So you, it could be questioning your sexuality. It could, be, it could be going to those kind of extreme places that make you redefine your shape. Um, and in a work of art, if you decide to, you know, take on doing a work of art, that means to say that you're getting in touch with your emotions, but as a result, you could be exploring places which are incredibly raw and which people find difficult to handle, or it could also be associated with huge amounts of shame for yourself. So that's kind of my idea of creativity and what really creativity feels like or means. Um, but this doesn't really solve the question of if I have any right or entitlement to talk about creativity. And I think for a very long time, I didn't, and I, I might not now, um, but that doesn't mean to say that I don't know very much about art. You know, when I was, I started my, my journey, um, you know, at, at university at 18 years old, I went to Paris and I, and I studied there and I learned a lot about how to draw and how to look like an artist. I sat in cafes and I smoked cigarettes and I dated very uh, French arty looking men with bad teeth. And I learned lots about kind of how to look like an artist, but I can't say that I 
felt creatively fulfilled or that creativity was affecting my life in a, in a beneficial way. Um, and then I went to an English university, a very famous one, which produced Damien Hirst and Tracy Emin and all these very kind of prolific um, art figures. And I learned a lot about the uh, conceptual background of art, uh, the history of art. Uh, I learned how to uh, make exhibitions in warehouses, but at the same time, I still didn't feel, I can't say that I was feeling creatively fulfilled because at the time I was very busy trying to make art that looked like other people. Uh, and then once I left there, I started working in lots of different types of galleries, galleries that uh, became incredibly reputable for uh, you know, um, uh, representing well-known artists. I, I, I started in, in a gallery called Thomas Dane that was a small independent gallery that represented Steve McQueen just when I started working there, who, who made the film 12 Years a Slave. And then suddenly I was in the middle of this very dynamic art world with all these fab fabulous looking art figures and art people. And I learned a lot about the art world and I learned a lot about uh, the, the mechanics of, of, of the art system and who was hot and who was not. But I can't say that made me understand the process of creativity anymore. Um, I even tried opening up my own gallery and I learned how to sell work, but I didn't feel any more fulfilled. So I got very bored of the commercial art world at one point. Uh, and as I've explained before to, to Carol, I decided to start teaching. And it was only there that I started getting a vague inclination of this human aspect of creativity, which could actively change people's lives and it was because I was teaching people about art and as a result I was learning a lot about the artists and the artist processes and I realized that all of these artists made work because they felt something and they had to find a way to say it and that was it it wasn't making it wasn't that they sat down and said I want to make a work of art it's because they went through something, as we were talking about before, Tracy Emin might have gone through, you know, Tracy Emin was an artist that, that, that had a, a difficult moment during her relationship and decided to manifest it in some way. And it turned out to be a work of art, but for her, it was just an expression. And that for me was absolutely key because it took the essence away or it took the focus away from the object of art. And it actually just made it about somebody trying to understand where they are in this life and how to cope with what happens to them and they just found ways of expressing it and then they worked really hard because they had a particular vision of how they wanted to express it but that's really for me that was kind of the connecting point and I realized that when teaching people the way in which I could make them feel connected to work is to actually lead them to the human aspect just to tell them the real story about what a person was feeling because they could identify with that. And through identifying with how a person was feeling, they could understand the work. And for me, that was a real kind of revelatory moment. And I, at that point, that's when I started doing workshops and thinking, wow, you know, maybe I could uh, start using this creative vessel, or this creative mechanism to try and help people actually undercover their stories. And at the time, my father had been diagnosed with terminal cancer and he spent three years battling cancer. And so I was trying to use these kind of very um, basic tools that I was starting to explore with people on myself and this very large kind of under this very large umbrella of history of art. But this started to kind of make sense to me. And then what happened was everything fell apart. <laughs> Absolutely everything fell apart. My father died um, and left behind him a huge heap of, of problems. Uh, I was in a relationship engaged to somebody and, uh, and that didn't with, withstand the weight of, of, of that kind of trauma. I had to quit my job uh, to go and try and save my family business really from financial bankruptcy and, and very, very toxic family situations. So there was a huge amount happening there. And in the middle of all of this, I meet this 
trendy looking geeky programmer with big glasses and converse shoes and a stickers on his laptop and he's nice to me and he's like hey you want to go on holiday with me i look at him and i'm like you are so inappropriate for me but you're nice so why not so in the middle of all of this i leave with this completely inappropriate individual and by mistake we make a baby and i come back and i tell everybody my family and my friends uh, that I'm going to have a baby with this person that I don't know and shock horror because he looks incredibly inappropriate and he doesn't conform in any way, shape or form to the identity that I had set out for myself, which was this kind of gallery going, problem busting individual. So, and on top of that, we have no money. <laughs> We're in shared accommodation and we decide to try and do this. And we have this child and then when our child is four months old, we go away and we have our fast holiday and we make another baby. <laughs> and so I found myself in this situation of having two babies one year apart with somebody that I don't particularly know very well, who from a very superficial point of view is not being supported by family or friends because they don't particularly understand the dynamic. And I don't know, and you all have children, having one children one year apart um, is a bit like being in quarantine. I mean, I couldn't move for the first year of my life. I couldn't actually leave the house because my children were such a threat to them. <laughs> it was virtually impossible. Um, so I found myself in a completely different set of circumstances to, to what I was used to and had to kind of redefine my life. And that's when, when my first son was four months old, I reached out for this book, which I should have here, but I don't, called The Artist Way, uh, which is by Julia Cameron, who, who she is the first person that introduced me to this very basic notion of the fact, well, she introduced me to three notions, really, which kind of opened my eyes, which is that, you know, everybody is intrinsically creative that creativity is our right because that is part of our biological makeup which i don't know why i didn't think about that before but now it feels it makes a huge amount of sense to me secondarily she introduced me to the idea that creativity is discipline she busted this myth that you are born a genius uh, like anything else you have to work at it and you have to work at it incredibly hard and one of the methods that she uses um, to explore that, and she asks everybody to do so, is to write these three pages a day in longhand. And what that does is that kind of connects you with that inner space that you have uh, of feelings and narratives and allows you to clear your head and just allows you to have this constant contact with how you're feeling and where you're at, which a lot of the time we just don't create space for. And also by materializing those words, you can actually see again and again what comes up in your life. Um, and thirdly, she introduced this idea with, and I don't think you necessarily need to be religious, it's more of a metaphorical idea, but it's very helpful when you're being creative, which is that creativity is divine. And that means to say that you should see whatever comes to you as coming through you and not from you, which means to say that whatever it is that you make or whatever it is that you create, you shouldn't look at it with judgment. You should look at it with curiosity and try and understand really what it is, which that is one of the fundamental things, I think, of what stops people from being creative is that um, they feel shameful. You know, I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to paint. I don't, but if you liberate yourself and you just say, you know what, this is not, this is not me, this is other. You know, then you get to look at what comes out with kind of a fresh perspective and again, have that creative thought process, which is, which is playful. So over the last couple of years, that's, that's within the restrictions of my life. That's what I have been working with. Um, and it's yielded some results. You know, it's really the first time that I've been thinking about this, but it has yielded some results in the, in the sense that, you know, um, doing 
practicing these pages and doing this writing um, has allowed me to process a lot of stuff. <laughs> a huge amount of stuff that I would probably would have had to spend a long time in therapy <laughs> for. You know, uh, the birth of children, the death of, the, the, the death of parents, the, the complete re-identification of myself. Um, it's also uh, managed to allow me to see that content and work with it. And as a result, I, I now write poetry. Uh, I, I take that content and I realized that I had to redefine what my uh, artistic uh, constraints were that I couldn't do sculptural painting like I did before or have these kind of large performances or, or make these installations um, and that's what I practiced at university and, and afterwards when I had a studio that I had to exist within these kind of constraints and if I had if I wanted to be creative I had to change my idea of what creativity was and I never imagined in my life that I'd end up writing poetry but not only have, do I write it, but it's the thing that I've enjoyed the most in my entire life. And my husband and I now are about to launch, I call him my husband, we haven't had time to get married. So he's like my baby daddy. I call him my husband anyway. Um, you know, we're about to launch a project now that uh, is, you know, he does photography and I do poetry and we're doing a collaboration together and we're about to launch that. And it, it really fulfills me, you know, and I, I really feel that that's very valid. It's probably the first time I've felt profoundly fulfilled because it's the first time that the works that I'm creating have meaning and purpose because it's not just about making an artwork. It's actually about things that have meant a huge amount to me and which I practiced every single day in trying to understand. Um, also introducing creative thought, and that's basically what I'm talking about, is, is allowing creativity to expand your notion of yourself has allowed me to have a healthy relationship with the person that I've had children with. You know, we, I had to re-question and re-evaluate the type of person I was when I met my husband, but also why I fell in love with him and, and redefine my shape and also kind of redefine what people thought of me and why they thought that and that has required lots of boundary shifting and, and, and lots of uh, self-interrogation in a way that previously would have made me so very uncomfortable because I was desperate to define who I was and part of this whole process was actually letting go of who I was and being accepting of the fact I was saying before that I am a changeable thing you know, uh, and I am just this, this thing that moves in different types of ways. And I, 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 can, I can adapt and I can find happiness kind of with, within any situation. And also creative solutions to being in this very intense relationship with somebody who you don't know. You know, for the first two years of our life, I think he saw, he, of our relationship, he saw me pregnant I think about we calculated like 18 months or something like that. Like he knew me as a psychotic pregnant woman for the first two years of our relationship. So we've had to figure out some very creative ways of communicating. And finally, um, my kids, you know, it's, it's allowed me to have some space from my children to define who I am, you know, creativity and having that space to tell myself stories about myself and find ways of expressing them and playing them has, has given me an identity of myself. And that's been my lifeline over the last couple of years. You know, it's been my saving grace. So in regards to how any of this can be applicable, I feel that we are in a moment right now where weirdly, this is a very similar situation for a lot of people to, I guess, what I went through during that time when I had children, which is confined, which is having to Refine new ways of existing within your life, maybe re identifying yourself with different forms of work, and that's why I think creativity changed my life genuinely because I'm happy now. <laughs> I'm I wasn't happy before when I chose my life, <laughs> but it just so happens that I'm I'm very happy now, you know. And this is this has really worked for me on a on a on a day to day level, and um, and so I think that. This idea, this, and it all starts from this very basic idea that I outlined in the exercise, which is connecting with your way you feel and manifesting it.
and uh, the, the, which is the very basic essence of creation and, and, and of, of creating anything, you know, and of creating something as small as a diary entry to creating something as large as, as a work of art. That's, that's the beginning. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think, I think that that idea, that notion can be valid now when people are navigating this landscape. So yeah. Wow. It's, so a short, a short talk went into a long one. That's what happens when I don't prepare. <laughs> Georgia, I think that was um, absolutely amazing and very revealing of what creativity truly is. I think everything that you've told us is really one big act of creation and creating for yourself, for yourself the life that you envisage, even without knowing that, just doing it. And I'm wondering if throughout that whole process, at some point, did you decide to be happy? Did you just make that choice? Did you say, you know, all of this that is happening around me, I'm, I'm, I, I want to be happy, although all this happens? You know, funny enough, and this is going to sound horrendously che <laughs> cheesy, but... Um... At, at this moment of, of crisis where everything was going so wrong in, in, in my life and it, it felt so horrendous, everything around me was falling apart, you know, at, at this particular moment. And, uh, and when I met Andy, it, it was one night we were sitting at the theater and we went to a, it was for a friend's birthday, went to a vodka bar and I was telling him of my sorrows over vodka. And he turned around to me and he said, do you think, that you're capable of, of being happy now, you know, after all of this, do you think that you can, because I was explaining to him about kind of the relationship I'd been in and how it become toxic. And I said, yeah, I'm really ready. I really, I really am ready to try and, and stop this dramatic narrative. And, uh, and that's actually when he, he, he said, he said, you want to come to Bali with me? <laughs> that was it. And it was actually very much that I looked at him and I was like, yes, I really, I really, I really am. Uh, and I think it's because you hit a certain level of drama. And at one point you think to yourself, I have to, I have to change, you know, I have to welcome happiness into my life. Actually. And that it was, it was a very active decision because I wanted it very much. I wanted peace. I wanted peace. Yeah. Thank you. How do you think, you know, I'm a mother myself, I have two children, and actually the process of bringing life into this world is a huge event. And, you know, arguably one of the biggest events of creation that we can possibly fulfill. How do you think that actually fits into the definition of creativity what does what does having children have to do with creation for you what did it do to you it it did it, it did everything because it was very much it brought me back to this it reinforced this idea that i have now that the most magnificent thing is something of all creativity is actually out of your control. You know, there's nothing quite like, I think it's so awe inspiring having children because the level of magnificence of that creativity is always one step ahead of you, you know, and uh, it's something that you've made, but it's, it has a life of its own and it's so magnificent and, and, and awe inspiring to witness that, um, you know, to a certain extent, I was like, well, I've done this. My job is done. You know, I'm never going to make anything as poetic or exquisite as this. But it also, from a very practical level, I mean, it is children is the birth of consciousness. I mean, you are seeing that. But on a, on a very practical level also, I think it does do an incredible amount for that training and discipline, which is what we talk about. You know, children is discipline. It's the grind. It's the hard work. It's I never thought I was capable of that level of work. And I worked really hard before having children, but I look back at my life and I was like, ha, ha, you know, ha, 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 did I think I worked? No, you know, it is, it is a whole different level of work, you know, so you are, um, you, you are, 
yeah, it, it, it definitely does prepare you for that level of discipline and that level of repetition. And I think that, 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 and, and it, it's, an, it's a, for a woman, I think, and for a man as well, but it's also empowerment as well, you know, and that, that sense of empowerment, you have children, you do this act, you make this thing, you, you wake up every day, you make sure they're alive, you feed them. It's an incredibly empowering thing. And I think after I did that, it also empowered me to say, if I can do this, I can do anything, really. You know, if I could put my mind to it, nothing is really <laughs> in relation to that. So, yeah. Thank you. Ladies, any more questions? No, I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you because it is, it, you know, I, I suppose like Petra, I don't think of myself as someone who's creative. Right? It's something that is a bit daunting, the whole creation. But I think it comes down to what, what you were talking about when you were mentioning the shame and the, you know, that, that you know, you, you have to own up to it or be rich, you know. You feel responsible for the what you make whatever that may be um and it's quite interesting and helpful to think of it as something other which which yeah, i think i'll try to use that going forward and see how that goes also on another day i was saying before like I'll just give you a little lesson on contemporary art and afterwards you'll be like, you know, you will not worry about like not being able to draw or paint. You will just be like, I am going, we could all do it. You know, we could, uh, we just like get naked and do a dance and we'll be like, we are, <laughs> we are the girl femme power and we could be like, this is art. You know, this is, there are no boundaries and rules right now for art making. So, you know, that's a very empowering thing. If you just want to Google contemporary art, have a look on some websites and you'll be like, hey, <laughs> you know, I can go there. <laughs> Not sure I have the time at the moment, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you I'll send you some stuff. <laughs> yeah, do. Thank you. Okay. If there are no more questions, then it only remains to say a big thank you. And um, yeah, I think it was very, for me personally, it was very fulfilling after you know, yesterday talking about purpose. And the process, for me, purpose is all about creation. To create gives you purpose. It makes you feel purpose. And if that creation, in addition, contributes to other people's lives, then that's it. That's, you know, that's happiness. That's, yeah, you know, I didn't just do something, but actually I outgrew myself for greater good. So, yeah, thank you very much. It was lovely to, to listen to you and as always.